Um, I can. Uh, I have not seen your email yet. I did take your bio off of the uh, UBO website, but that's fine. That's me... perfect. That's fine. That's okay. Welcome uh, everyone who's joining. Uh, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. Uh, thank you for joining a few minutes early. Uh, we'll be starting uh, very shortly. Thank you. Um, yeah, welcome again, everyone who's joining. Uh, we'll uh, thank you for joining a few minutes early. We'll be starting uh, very shortly. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. Uh, so uh, at uh, two minutes past four um, or three, Nigeria, UK time. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone who's just joined us. Um, I'm just going to say we'll be starting in just two minutes uh, past the hour. So thank you everyone and we'll be starting 
uh, in just a few minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, for waiting uh, just two minutes. Uh, we're going to wait for a few more people to join, uh, and then we will get uh, started. So thank you, everyone, and thank you for joining us this Friday afternoon. Thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for joining. We're going to start in, in just 30 seconds and wait for the last few people to join, and then we'll get uh, kick started. Thank you so much for your patience. Okay, that was good. So, hi everyone, good afternoon, uh, good morning uh, to where you're at. My name is Daniel Block, I'm the CEO of Sesso Global, and this is a webinar uh, in, uh, in partnership um, with uh, First World Communities, uh, FCMB Bank UK, and Udo Dumo and Belo Sagi. Uh, the topic of the webinar is investing in affordable housing in Nigeria. And as we know, uh, this is a huge topic and one of huge importance. Nigeria alone has uh, is estimated an 18 million housing uh, deficit. And today we're going to talk about different uh, projects happening, different strategies. We'd like to get questions from the audience. Uh, as a little housekeeping, you'll see in the chat bot, um, you can direct uh, any questions to any of our, um, of our guests. Um, so I, I see there's a question. So um, so you won't be able to share your video, but any questions you'll have the chat bot. So any questions you have during the webinar for any of our uh, panelists, uh, please put them into the chat bot uh, and they will get answered. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce our distinguished uh, guests. So firstly, uh, on the panel, uh, we're uh, delighted to have Dr. Piamo Tunde Reis. Uh, Dr. Piamo Tunde Reyes is the founder of First World Communities Limited, a company focused on large scale delivery of affordable housing and associated infrastructure. He also established First World Ventures Limited in the United Kingdom to provide executive training services, including mindful leadership based on emotional intelligence and other transform transformation training programs. Tunde is a frequent speaker at various professional events and a consultant on housing, land, and urban development. He has served on several committees on housing and urban development for states and the federal government. Retired from the Nigerian Army as a Brigadier General, he is a non-executive director of the board of other companies and nonprofit organizations. 
Fimo Reyes served as executive chairman of the Federal Housing Authority of Nigeria, where he received official uh, commendation for his initiatives from the president of Nigeria. While in the military service, he conceptualized and delivered the Nigerian Army Housing Scheme, a retired housing scheme, retirement housing scheme for officers and soldiers, which became the pace setter for Nigeria's nascent affordable housing industry and has widely been replicated. He also established a mortgage bank and obtained the operating license to support the scheme. He was pioneer chairman, board of directors of the Army Welfare Holdings, and also managing director of the Nigerian Army Properties Limited. He is the founder of Cooperative Village of Bador, a pioneer cooperative housing community in Lekki Peninsula, considered to be one of the best of its kind in West Africa. Tunde's track record as a housing expert also includes initi initiating the Cooperative Home Ownership Incentive Scheme, Choice, an incorporated partnership between First World Communities Limited and the Lagos State Government of, of Nigeria, which has delivered over 1,000 new homes under the Lagos Choice Limited Partnership. It's a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Uh, we have with us uh, Mrs. Stella Okuzu. Stella is an African-focused banker with cross-functional experience across private business and banking, corporate banking, risk management, product development, internal control, and process reengineering. As a pioneer business head in the Bank of England approved role, I, she built her bank's retail banking business from a concept on paper in 2018 to a now thriving division of the bank providing boutique UK banking services to businesses and high net worth individuals. As head of marketing for the bank, she leads brand positioning, social media, advertising content, and partnership management. With a passion for entrepreneurship development, Sela has led product development and business growth across multi-branches, multi-branch financial institutions, exceeding balance growth and revenue growth objectives. It's a pleasure to have you, Stella, and have you representing FCMB Bank UK. Thank you very much. My pleasure indeed, Daniel. And lastly, um, not least, we have Ekundayo Onajobi. He's a senior associate at Udo Domo Belosaki, a leading legal firm in Nigeria and specializes in corporate and commercial transactions, including corporate advisory, capital markets, banking and finance, and real estate transactions. He was a part of the team that advised one of Nigeria's largest conglomerates on its acquisition of majority shares in two listed companies and the divestment of its minority interest in two of its subsidiaries to foreign investors. His capital experience includes public offerings of debt securities by corporate and government entities in Nigeria. So thank you all so much for joining. It's a fantastic panel we have today, leading in affordable housing, development, uh, banking, and diaspora banking, and on the legal side. So we'll really have the tools to answer uh, any questions uh, on that front. So to get started, um, we'd love to introduce myself in, in, in Seso Global. Um, share my screen here. So to tell you a bit, my name is Daniel Block. As I said, I'm the CEO of Seso Global. Seso is a one-stop shop for real estate transactions. We're a digital uh, uh, website and mobile app where you come on to find your properties. Uh, what we're really trying to solve is that buying properties in the emerging markets in Nigeria and beyond, is, is, it can be costly and confusing. Oftentimes, we don't know if the properties are legitimate. We don't know how we can find our lawyers, our bankers, all the different service providers. Seso is a marketplace that brings all of these stakeholders together in one app. We work with the top and most respected property developers who are willing to show their verified documents, to check out their properties, to know that they are legit, that they are well-built, and they have the buyer and the homeowner in mind. We then connect you on the app to law firms, banks, surveyors, valuers, and insurance firms. Our aim is to make it easy to invest and buy uh, in properties in Nigeria. When you come on and look at a property, you can schedule a tour, you can request a, uh, a service, you can request a mortgage. And the aim is to really to make this a seamless uh, flow so that we have our developers who list the properties on the platform, which get verified. They go on to the CESO marketplace, where you can find on our website, uh, where you can request services, we can liaise with our partner banks, and then it goes for the buyer who can make an account and simply close a transaction. So what CESO is really trying to do is make the purchasing process simple um, and easy. So as you come on, we have law firms on our platforms, insurance firms, facilities managers, banks such as FCMB, Bank UK, and Cesar Global is a UK company with an office in London and Nigeria. We can meet clients in both aims. FCMB Bank is a UK is a bank registered in the UK, so it can serve uh, requests uh, for financing um, there. 
So Seso truly believes that we can unleash the buyer spending power in Nigeria, whether it's for diaspora or local to make it easy and seamless to purchase properties. So that's a bit about what we do uh, at Seso. Um, and um, we'll go more into that um, in a bit. And if there's any questions, of course, uh, we can discuss that. Um, so now what I'd love to do is to, you know, as I said, a key aspect of Seso is trust and trusted properties. And we always want to highlight our developers and our partners who are building fantastic projects, well-built, um, well-managed, uh, and really with the homeowner in mind. So now we're going to go uh, on to, to a video of Choice Oasis uh, by First World Communities uh, and see the fantastic work that Dr. Bayes and his team are doing. So uh, enjoy the video. Let's, let's watch it. So that was the beautiful uh, Choice Oasis Estate. And just wanted to touch on that. There's a range from two bed apartments, three beds, uh, four bed duplexes. So an amazing estate that you can see. So now we're going to go to our, our, our fantastic panelists and um, you know, get started with the first questions. Um, we'd like to ask uh, first to uh, Dr. Rees, can you tell us a bit more about your motivation uh, for Choice Estates um, and how uh, your work is addressing the huge need in the Nigerian housing market, and why did you decide to go into affordable housing? Oh, I think you might be on mute. Sorry, um, any other speakers here? No, no, we can't. I can't hear Dr. Rees. Okay, can we try, sorry, Dr. Rees, can, can you try one more time? Um, Okay, I'm so sorry. You might need to, uh, to exit. You might need to exit and, and rejoin. Um, maybe you can try. So sorry. So then let me come back to you. So let's start. Um, let's start with Stella. So Stella, I'd like to hear more about the work that the UK is doing to provide financing for diaspora. You know, they're eager to buy a house uh, in Nigeria. Okay. Th thank you very much, um, um, Daniel. Uh, for this opportunity once again. And thanks for the partnership. Um, for those who may not know about FCMB Bank UK, I'll just give a brief overview. Um, so we are a UK-based um, subsidiary of FCMB Group, uh, which is 
proudly, we're FDMB Group is the first wholly indigenous owned banking group in Nigeria and uh, with several subsidiaries. Now, our focus as a bank is to provide UK banking services to people in Africa. So we, we really exist to solve a problem where the West may not realize or just ignore the fact that you have people in Africa who are doing well, people of integrity, people who are successful um, involved in global trade who require services in key financial centers like ours. And that's the gap we are, we're filling. Now, we are a whole-fledged bank, so we provide both liability opportunities for people to place deposits, maintain current accounts, savings accounts, and the like, and we also provide loans. Now, within the personal business banking segment, which is just one section of the bank, because we have corporate banking, we have trade finance, but within the personal business banking segment, our flagship lending product is our buy-to-let proposition. Now, from my description of why we exist as a business, for the most part, we have people in Africa. Of course, Nigeria remains one of the largest countries, um, economies in Africa, who are buying properties in the UK for investment. However, we are aware that there's a, of a thriving um, African diaspora and specifically the Nigerian diaspora. And so what we do, mindful of the fact that we are here as problem solvers, we also provide loans um, to people who live in the UK and own investment property. So not property that you live in, based on the value of that property, we can provide you secured lending to buy, to buy properties in Nigeria, affordable homes or any other property you may seek to purchase. Um, that is key because you would find that for the most part, if you were to request that finance from a high street bank, the requirement is that you use the money, say, for renovation or extension of the houses. But we exist to provide you funding uh, for you to um, take advantage of opportunities of investing in property um, in Nigeria. And we do that working with credible parties um, like um, CESO Global and uh, the Communities World um, um, Limited so that you know that you're not just getting funding. We have done due diligence on our partners also. So we're able to provide um, that. There's an increasing demand for that and, and we are happy to, to play in that corridor um, to meet the needs. Um, of people who want to do that. And in the course of our conversation, if there are any specific questions, I'll, I'll be happy to say that. But one thing I must say um, be, before I, I pass on the mic is the fact that um, the, the lending that we provide are in terms that you would understand, terms that make sense to you. So for instance, for people here, we are lending for up to 15 years at a current interest rate of 5.1%. Um, so that really is affordable. So it's affordable finance for affordable housing, if you will. Um, and that proposition is available to all. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Stella. Um, uh, doctor, I think, we'll, we'll, can, we, can we see if the sound's working? The sound check? Yes. Um, okay. Is it okay it now? Well. Yeah, fantastic. Perfect. So that. let me just go back to the original question, which was, can you tell us about your motivation uh, for in the affordable housing industry and what is the impact you are addressing in this uh, in the Nigerian housing market? Well, thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Uh, to start by appreciating this platform and the work that uh, CESO is doing to bring properties in Nigeria to Nigerians in the diaspora or indeed anyone who might be interested in investing in um, housing in, in Nigeria and also other parts of Africa. Um, our motivation for going into this is primarily because, as uh, someone said, housing is at the heart of nation building. The whole idea of a nation is about territory. Uh, so if you have citizens of a nation who do not have a portion of that uh, nation, belonging to them in some way, either by lease or by ownership, then really we have not started to address the issues of linking sovereignty to citizenship. So we chose to look at this and we chose to start um, at the lower end of the scale up to the middle income. So we provide housing in the range of say, um, as low as um, 5 million Naira, uh, two bedrooms, which we have built in Agua in Lagos. And um, the 
most expensive property we develop is about 32 million naira, which is semi semi detached uh, duplex. And that those are all in Lagos prices. So uh, looking at that, you can say it's affordable. So what we aim to do is not only to provide a place to live, that is the utility value of the homes that we provide, but in the design and the community management, we seek to do more than that. We seek to really build a community because as that uh, national leader said, nations don't exist. It is families that exist because it is families that give birth to communities and it is communities that give birth to states and it is states that give birth to nations. So we try to foster a sense of community. And in doing that, we also create wealth because if the community is well managed, then the properties will appreciate. And um, those who invested in it, even though they have a utility value, over time would see their investment in the property also appreciate. So it's a win-win. And in other developed economies, it's not uncommon to find people maybe downsize in retirement so that they can extract the equity from their homes to, to improve the quality of their life. Or even whilst they are living in the home, they can extract some equity and um, improve the quality of their lives. So it's not just about providing shelter. It's about wealth creation. It's about improving the quality of communities. That is our motivation in first world communities. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's fantastic. And I think, you know, as one who's been to the estate, one thing that's very fantastic is that, you know, you, so, you really invested in yeah, the infrastructure, the network, and that, in that the, everyone who buys into the estate can benefit together, was as you said, as Legos grows and the opportunities increase, you know, buying into these secure states that are going to persist into the future uh, is, is a way of, of, of wealth building and, as you say, nation building, which is fantastic. Um, I can, um, so one thing people will ask is, you know, Nigerians often face difficulties when paying, uh, buying a house in Nigeria, especially the, the diaspora who face uh, difficulties when investing. Can you tell us about some of the major risks in buying a property in Nigeria and, and some that you want to look out for when, when you're purchasing? Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for that question. And uh, thank you for inviting me to this platform. I think there are two major things that investors need to look out for, two major risks that they need to be aware of. The first one is the biggest one, which is the issue of title. You can't go wrong on that issue. You need to be sure that the title of the seller is um, registered. You need to be sure that the person selling the property to you has a registered title to the property that they are selling. And the only way you can get this assurance is to engage qualified advisors to undertake due diligence for you. So you will need your lawyers to undertake due diligence in terms of the title to confirm at the relevant lands registry that the person that intends to sell to you or the person from whom you are buying this property has registered title to this property. And this is very important because um, you have so many land issues. Uh, you have quite a number of issues in Nigeria when it comes to land, issue of title, issue of um, uh, multiplicity of claims, and you know some other issues uh, like that. So you just need to be double sure that on the issue of title, you have that on lockdown. And you can um, solve the problem of title by engaging qualified lawyers to help you um, undertake the due diligence. So that is the biggest risk any investor in real estate in Nigeria um, needs to look out for. Similar to that, you, in addition to doing the legal due diligence, it may also be important for you to undertake some form of physical inspection and just do some form of physical investigation around. You might never know what you can find out just by engaging um, other property owners around the, the, uh, the, the property you intend to buy. Just by engaging them and doing some form of um, informal discussion or informal inquiries, you just might never know if there's been contention on the land if there's been some form of litigation. So due diligence in, in, in its entirety is important, either legal due diligence or physical due diligence. You know, that's, uh, those are very important steps that need to be taken just before um, you, you acquire, acquire the property. And then on the non-legal issue, you also need to confirm the track record. 
of the, the of the of the seller so if you are buying a developer uh, a property that has been put together by a developer you also need to confirm their track record to ensure that the materials that have been used to put up such structures are good and you you don't have structural integrity issues yeah i think those are two on on, uh, on a big scale you, due diligence is very important both legal and physical and also the track record of the developer who you are dealing with yeah, fantastic. Yeah, nothing can be more key. Yeah, than making sure you know the title is there, and I know many people have had experience and they can they can speak to that. So it's best to have it right uh, from the beginning. And I think an example of a developer that's done that very well is, is you know is yourself, uh, Dr. Reyes. And I just want to be touch on you know your work at um, at First World uh, Communities and how you mitigated some of these risks, especially by providing uh, already built homes and payment plans so uh, the buyers can see, um, you know, uh, can, can purchase it over time and have that security. Uh, can you talk about a few ways uh, and share more details about this, about some of these risks that Equine Dio uh, mentioned, how, um, you know, uh, virtual communities is uh, mitigating these? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Equine um, for that. I think the biggest risk, like you said, is in um, title. Uh, what we do is that we do not develop properties that do not have registered title. Um, all our properties have um, a Lagos State Government Certificate of Occupancy. And where we have developed in Abuja, we have a, a Certificate of Occupancy uh, from the uh, Federal Capital Territory. So it's searchable. You can uh, do it, your due diligence on it and get an official report confirming that indeed uh, the title to the land that we have developed is in the name of fourth world communities or, for, or any of our affiliate companies that we use as special purpose vehicles for our development. And the other aspect is on quality of construction or uh, contesting claims. We take care of that by ensuring that we not only work with credible partners but we also have in-house uh, the end-to-end -end capability, which is that we can conceptualize our own projects. We have the capacity to design them in-house. Uh, in an earlier life, I, I trained as an architect, you know, and we still have architects working in the company. So we have a design uh, entity within the company. We also have a construction entity within the company. So we are a full-blown construction company, uh, one of our affiliates. And uh, we have a facility management company that manages the community and ensures that we retain value. So uh, we've taken care of the aspect of title, you know, and we ensure that whatever uh, subtitle we'll be granting to buyers, usually typically we give subleases to help us manage the community better uh, because subleases allow you to provide development control guidelines so that tomorrow your neighbor won't wake up and decide that uh, he wants to convert his, chore, his uh, property from residential to into a factory or for that matter into a place of worship. You know, so these are the kind of things that make people circumspect about investing in Nigeria or maybe they want to raise it. You know, we always have development control guidelines embedded in our subtitle that we provide on our on our estates and um, we also try to ensure that the payment plan is affordable uh, people sometimes tend to mix up affordability with low cost that has never worked if the cost is low then it will be difficult to finance it because if it is too low cost it will not stand the test of time so you need to do a balance between the quality, ensuring that the quality will stand the test of time, as in maybe do a 25-year mortgage with FCMB, you know, whoever provides you the money, that in 25, 50 years, 100 years' time, that property will still be upstanding and in good structural condition. So we do ensure that we don't do low cost, we do good quality, but may achieve affordability in the means of payment. So for example, we allow our subscribers to pay once they uh, is agreed over a period of five years, you know, so they can pay instrumentally if that works. And that basically is like a bridging loan to enable get, uh, get them 
to access more long-term finance. So within the period that they've come into the scheme and they are paying their deposits, they can then arrange more longer time uh, finance with either FCMB or any of the finance entities. We also talk, spoke to the Nigeria Mortgage um, Refinancing Corporation. They have a scheme that enables us to work with some primary mortgage banks in Nigeria who can also give them uh, loan facilities. So we seek to achieve this affordability in the way we uh, allow off-takers to pay for their uh, for the units that they desire to have. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much. That was a great overview and really uh, you know, shows the need uh, for a developer to get confidence to provide the full service between the title to the build, the construction, and the, uh, the facilities management. And I'm sure some of the audience might be interested in more info on these loan products as well, which if anyone has questions, you know, feel free to ask them to the chat. So kind of to go on that question when you're talking about of, of security and making sure the house lasts long, I'm sure some people on, on the webinar and, and in general are interested in buying property um, for investment. And as you said, many developers such as yourself uh, have facilities management arms uh, to make sure that that can be done smoothly. Uh, Ekendayo, I want to ask you on, on the legal side that, especially for those who are not familiar with uh, purchasing with tenants, does Nigeria have enforceable tenant rights? Are you safe if you are an investor and you want to rent your property out? Uh, what if the person, you know, uh, you have to, you know, you have to get them to leave? Or what are the, what are the laws around uh, tenancy in Nigeria? And is, and is, it, is it a secure investment for it? have uh, tenancy laws and um, um, each state of the federation has their equivalent uh, but i will use uh, lagos as an example in lagos state we have the tenancy law of 2011 which primarily sets out the minimum standards of interaction between the landlord and the tenant but just to step away from the law uh, just to take a step away from the law to say that your landlord tenant relationship is primarily contractual and it is something that in an in an enforcement scenario the court will definitely enforce the agreements of the parties and determine as such. So it is a contract that will be enforced. And on the legal side, um, just like Lagos, we have the tenancy, uh, tenancy law of Lagos State of 2011. And the beautiful thing about the tenancy law of 2011 is that it seeks to create rights and corresponding obligations for both the landlords and the tenants. So what you will typically find in your contract as a, i.e. the rights of the landlord vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rights of the tenants and their corresponding obligations. So what the tenancy law of 2011 did was to not only leave these provisions within the realms of the contract of the parties, but actually to codify it such that your standard obligations in your tenancy agreements are now statutory obligations of both the landlord and the tenant. As such, in an enforcement scenario, the court is not only interpreting the, the contract of the parties, but also seeking to enforce the minimum standards that are set out by, by law. So yes, we have enforceable tenancy laws, and you also have courts. Um, there are courts that have jurisdiction to entertain any dispute in that regard. And for the purpose of timing and preservation of relationships, you also have uh, mediation and arbitration centers that are established for the purpose of quick dispensation of um, disputes. So yes, we have enforceable tenancy laws and the court will enforce your um, the tenancy arrangement between the parties. Fantastic. So you know, more security and I think that's a you know, better way to do it direct with the developer or with your uh, client who will be doing the facilities management. Um, so uh, we, we'd like to hear your perspective from on uh, on the banking side. As we've heard about you know uh, the the legal aspects, you know uh, the opportunities uh, in affordable housing. Do you see it to now as a good time to buy uh, uh, invest in property in Nigeria, especially as a, 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 a diaspora? Thank, thanks for that question. You know, as you asked the question, I rephrase it in my head to say, is this a good time to create wealth? Now, so the, the, the answer to that will be now is as good as any other time. Um, but just to, to, to address your, your, the question specifically, when you're making an investment, you need to determine, you must know upfront what your goals are, okay? Usually you're looking for something that is stable, something that will generate income for you, 
something that is affordable, something that even if you had to acquire debt, or obtain debt from, you would not, um, you know, would, you, you can afford to make those payments. Um, so specifically, I would say, yes, this is a good time. Um, the statistics, I mean, Nigeria's population continues to grow, okay? Um, 51.2% of that is urban population. And we, you had mentioned in your opening remarks, um, Daniel, that there's a housing deficit of 18 million. Now, I would like to say that I have heard the figure 16 to 18 million for the last, I would say, 14 years. So definitely the, the demand exists, okay? So would there be people who would occupy your properties? The simple answer is yes. Um, property always remains as a stable asset, okay? You would expect that over time it would um, appreciate. But I would like to say that for everyone who is um, investing, you always have to have a balanced approach. So you would have assets which are easily realizable, cash, stocks, bonds, and of course, um, and property and um, real estate. So to that extent, now is a good time to buy. Um, working, you see, you, it, when you're taking those decisions, you're taking those decisions intelligently. Now, you'd find that even if you are to invest in real estate now, where you buy, at what price you buy is very important. Now, when you have the likes of um, properties developed by um, Dr. Reese's company, um, what, they, what that gives you is economies of scale. So you probably find that if you were to buy the same property as a standalone, it might cost you more. So what it is, actually, when you're investing, you really want, even anywhere in the world, they say when you're buying property, you should make money at the point of investing. So if you're able to buy property now, in a secure environment where there is demand, the demand is assured. And the fact that the, uh, when you're buying properties which are developed by key developers, they also would have taken into consideration what the income generation potential of those properties are. They would build those properties where people are seeking to live. So the answer is yes and yes on the different accounts I have given. I, I haven't mentioned the fact that, especially now, sadly so, um, the diaspora have a very strong buying power, um, specifically on account of the strength of the pound um, to different currencies across Af Africa, including the Naira. So the answer to that question is yes, this is a good time to buy. Um, you're buying an asset which is stable. You should diversify your portfolio. You're working with partners who have identified the good locations where you can receive residual income. And these are assets that will appreciate over time. And I like to say specifically for, for Nigerians in the diaspora, there is also the emotional aspect to it. So even if you had tenants living in those properties at a time when you decide to downsize or relocate to, to Nigeria, you have a home of your own. And, and as um, Dr. Risa said, then you can fully say that, yes, you are part of the, of the, um, of the nation Nigeria by owning a piece of the land. So the simple answer is yes, uh, for the various reasons I, I have given. Okay, that's fantastic. Does anyone want to add anything to that? Or move to the next question. Yes, uh, I think that that's very well said, uh, Stella. Mm -hmm. The only thing to just add is that um, uh, in these days when interest rates are very low, you know, so I wouldn't expect the banker to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the yes, best indeed. Thing now is, is a good time. Is in real estate. So, yeah. not that I'm encouraging you to take away your deposits from the bank, but the place to really have an investment now with um, a returns, get returns in the future is real estate. So, thank you very much. But I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that, Dr. Rees, because the fact that interest rates are low, they're low on both sides, both on the liability and the asset side. And so you find that while we are lending now at 5.1%, um, by February, we're lending at 5.75%. So now, yes, indeed, this is a good time to take a mortgage from us and, and buy those properties. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks so much. So there's been quite a few questions that have come in. Thank you, everyone, uh, for these questions. So. The first one we're going to ask is uh, to Ekundayo from Yemi. Thank you, Yemi. Um, so Yemi has asked, what is the risk when the seller has not perfected his title on a property with the state government but has a deed? From all indications, how feasible is what, what people refer to as double consent? 
Okay, um, so I'm trying to explain it in the simplest possible way. It is possible, um, picking up from where Yemi said, what has happened is that um, you have someone who owns the property, who has bought the property, but who has not registered or perfected his or her title, and the person is looking to sell or float that kind of property. So the question then is, how do I buy from someone that does not have title? And if you recall, the biggest risk I flagged was the issue of title. So the question is, how do I buy from someone that does not have title? Um, one way to solving that problem is what um, Yemi has suggested, which is double consent. And for ease of reference, I will just create a scenario. So you have party A, who has a um, title, who sold to party B, who doesn't have title, and now party B is looking to sell to uh, Mr. C. So the question is, what should Mr. C, um, what should Mr. C do, seeing that the seller doesn't have title? Um, there are two options. One is the double content route, which is um, um, a route that uh, enables you to present the documentation from Mr. A and B as one, and then the documentation from Mr. B and C as the other, and then you file both documents with the government. That's, this route is actually um, is recognized in Lagos State, and what that does is to register the two titles with using one work stream. So that is possible. You can do the double consent route, which enables Mr. B and Mr. C to prefer to perfect their title at once. That is uh, one option. The other option um, is the other option that can be adopted in this scenario is that to the extent that Mr. A has a registered title and Mr. B, even though bought or purchased the property and has not um, perfected and is looking to avoid perfect or, you know, cannot afford perfection cost at the time you purchase the property. One other option that you can um, you can adopt is for Mr. C to take the title directly from Mr. A. So what happens is because Mr. A is the registered title holder, in the records of the government, the owner of that property is Mr. A, legally speaking. Factually speaking, the owner of the property loosely is Mr. B. So the question is, if we want to transfer the legal title, you cannot give what you don't have. So only Mr. A can give that title. So if option one is to do double consent, which is you file both documents at the same time. Option two is that to the extent that Mr. A has title, Mr. B does not, and we are seeking to buy from Mr. C. For transfer of legal title, Mr. C can take directly from Mr. A for the purpose of title documentation. Albeit, you will have back-end uh, documents to show how that transaction was structured. So that is another option to double content. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. So definitely got to be yeah clear if it's a secondary sale, who the original owner is. Um, so now we're going to ask a question um, uh, around the mortgages. Um, it's kind of going to a few people ask some more questions. We'll put them uh, in. So uh, Oluwatosin, thank you, Oluwatosin, uh, asked uh, to sell a, a mortgage uh, in pounds to buy a house to let in Nigeria in Naira has a risk of Naira valuation. How does FCMB loan structure cover this risk? So if you're going to take a loan, say, in, in, in the UK, uh, and then say to buy at Choice Oasis, um, how would one, uh, does FCMB um, structure uh, cover the risk? And uh, Olu asked a similar uh, question. Thank you, Olu. Um, for folks in the diaspora, how easy is the game finance from Nigerian banks? What sort of collateral is required? And we have a FCMB Bank UK right here. So, um, so fantastic. So maybe, Sal, do you want to put those two questions together? Yes, certainly. Thanks, um, Olu and Olu um, he, he, the, the The question is very important. And to be honest, FCMB Bank UK, um, to avoid those foreign exchange risks, we're giving you... A, a loan in pounds, which is a currency in which you earn, and the, the loan is disbursed also to the developer or the agent, whoever is selling this property in pounds. Um, as you would be aware, in Nigeria, people do own um, um, accounts in foreign currencies. They would have domiciliary accounts, which are either dollar-based, euros, or pounds. Now, it is not likely, to be honest, that any of these parties will receive, refuse payment 
in pounds or dollars. Say we're giving somebody else in a dollar loan. And this is because sadly, a lot of the input in building um, in Nigeria is still imported. And so it just makes life easier actually for the for the seller of the property for the developer so the simple question is that it's um we would give you the loan in pounds and we'll disburse the loan in pounds to the developer who can convert it will in nigeria um there is a dearth of foreign currency foreign foreign currency so you're actually making life easier i would say um, for the for the the seller of the property um the other question was um, really directed I would say to our parent bank, if one were to buy a property in, in, in Nigeria, um, in, if, you're buying, if, you're, if you're taking a, a loan from a bank in Nigeria, the property in Nigeria would be the collateral, which is what um, Ekunde has been speaking to about having a, a legal mortgage in place, having making sure that the vendor has a certificate of occupancy. Um, it, is a, an ex, it is a process that you must go through it is a process that can take a while and somewhat expensive. And so what we're trying to do is to bridge that gap where even without, as you would subsequently have to um, process the certificate of occupancy so you legally own the property. But if you were borrowing from us, we are happy to take um, the collateral of your assets here and then you subsequently um, process your, your title deeds um, in Nigeria. I hope that answers the question, Olu. Thanks. Okay, fantastic. No, I think that was great. Um, and so we've had a few questions based on what you had said, uh, Dr. Reese, on the NHS, where people are, are, are a few just general questions about how you would get started. So if someone would want to buy uh, a choice uh, in choice of state with uh, a NHS, do you go to the developer first? Do you go to NHS first? Does the developer provide any assistance with it? Um, maybe you could um, give us a little insight on that. And thank you, Angel and Chidi, for that question. Uh, thank you. I think the uh, first part of call for the NHS would be either the developer or the primary mortgage bank. But we don't give um, NHF loans. It's the primary mortgage banks that do that. But if you come to us, we'll introduce you to some of our partner mortgage banks. We will then process the National Housing Fund loan on your behalf, for those who are not familiar with the acronym. Uh, but the National Housing Fund is a contributory scheme so only those who contribute to the scheme from their monthly income are entitled to have access to loans from it. So for the diaspora, I'm aware that at some time ago, they were trying to create a window that would allow them to contribute to the scheme. But only primary mortgage banks may know the status of that right now. Uh, it requires a contribution for a minimum period of six months to be eligible uh, to access that loan. So, so that's the way it works at the moment. Thank you. Fantastic, thanks so much. And um, uh, Ekundayo, uh, Nanso has asked a follow-up question. We just wanna know that for the double consent route, do you pay a higher fee in perfection than in the alternative solution or would it be reduced that you're doing them uh, together? So if, um, the answer to that is yes, but I would like to put it in context so that I don't scare them. So um, you you know that when you are perfecting, certain fees are paid. Well, and I'll use Lagos as an example. Um, constant fee in Lagos states is 1.5%. Um, capital gains tax, 0.5. Stamp duty, 0.5. And registration, 0.5. Which brings a total of about 3%. And that's, there's a fundamental assumption that the parties here are individuals. Now, if you are doing the double consent route, what that means is that you are obtaining consent for two transactions in one sweep. So if you're obtaining consent for two transactions in one sweep, then you will pay for two, you pay twice for the consent that you are getting for those transactions. But for the consent element that you pay double, uh, I think the other fees you pay just one, once and for all for them. So yes, you pay, it's, it's, it's slightly higher, but it's just on one line item and not on the entire perfection line items. Fantastic, that definitely uh, makes sense. Um, and one thing uh, I saw I talked about on the, the numbers thing, static, you know, for 14 years, almost with the same housing uh, deficit and the demand that, you know, continuously grows. 
you know, one thing I think that we haven't touched on yet, um, you know, on this call is the location of uh, first world communities and the growth of the uh, the refinery in Ichiku Leki. Um, so one thing, just for all who don't know, uh, is, is um, I'm sure many have heard that there's uh, Dangote is building a major refinery with now the largest seaport in um, in uh, in Africa at the Leki Deep Sea Port, um, and uh, Choice Estates is in Abidjo, which is a good distance there. So I just would love to hear, uh, Dr. Reese, your thoughts of how you've seen that community grow and why you've chosen to uh, to develop there and what's been the effect. I know you mentioned there's a, a large industrialist that have rented from you so that people are seeing this new uh, commercial hub of, of Lagos emerge. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Daniel. I, I, just as you described it very aptly there, it's the new commercial hub of Lagos. Um, with all that is happening, not only with the Dangote refinery, there's the Lekki free trade zone also, uh, with a lot of investment already going into that. So really, we are witnessing the uh, evolution of a modern hub for Lagos. And Abidjo is right in the center of all that. I was uh, also privileged to be part of the uh, master planning of the Lekki sub-region. And it's, it's interesting, if you look at the Lekki Master Plan, which is now a public document, you will see the location of Abidjo there. Uh, not only do we have these um, work opportunities, there are also a lot of renowned educational institutions um, within very close proximity of Abidjo Diary. For example, the Lagos Business School is quite close, and so is the Pan-Atlantic University, not too far away. And um, we also have um, other facilities as well. Secondary schools are there. The well-known Corona uh, School already has a, a school right inside Abidjo GRE. So we have in, a, in Victoria Land, in Ikoi, uh, Bagara, and now they has been in Abidjo GRE for a couple of years. So you, you, we have witnessed, you know, the gradual evolution of that place. I mean, about uh, five years from now, when the refinery is expected to be fully operational, um, I just can't want to imagine what sort of um, activity will be going on there, and of course, what that will do for property prices. So, it's uh, it's enough to drop a hint that. Um, that yeah. <laughs> that's, no, the the hint, that's the place you want to take your place your bet. I'm taking the hint, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's very exciting. And the talks of the, the fourth mainland bridge uh, connecting uh, Aja and Nikorodu uh, will further open up access. And we could almost see, you know, with uh, the um, the congestion, you know, in, in BI, Ikoyi, in that area, that several of the industrial businesses will move further that way and be uh, a new economic hub. Um, so it's very exciting. Um, 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 Stella, we have a question in from Kalista, which asks, if one hasn't got any collateral in UK, can you be accepted for a mortgage based on your income? Um, Kalissa, thank you for that question. Um, the current proposition is um, limited to people who have investment property. Uh, one thing I would mention is that the property doesn't have to be yours. Um, sometimes I think it's maybe we have to sometimes consider about pooling our resources to be able to get the gains which you can share across. So if you do know anyone, a trusted party who does have such property, investment property, we could actually take third party collateral um, to meet your requirements. And then whatever you decide, whether you share the proceeds of the, the investment, I mean, that is one way you could look at it. Um, FCMB Bank UK exists to solve problems uh, we, we are mindful of the fact that the current proposition is somewhat limiting, and, and so we are working to expand that, um, which would not necessarily require that you own investment property in the UK. Uh, I'm not in a position to share the details you know, of that, but the mere fact, Kalisa, that you are on this call um, you, and you've provided your details to the, to the organizers, as soon as that is in place, and uh, we would let you know through the contact details um, you've shared through registering for, for this webinar. Thanks. Okay, fantastic. 
Um, yeah, and oh, we lost. And if there's any questions, um, again, uh, please um, um, please add them into um, the group uh, into the chat in, in that end. Um, I could uh, maybe just on, on, on the legal note as well that um, when when you bought, purchased your house, uh, can you take us through? What is the, the full, the process of what should you expect to do, say, once you purchase your house, what is the first step into ensuring that you do the, uh, the proper steps in order to get your title secured? Okay. Um, let me just go through the entire spectrum. Uh, to, 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 to acquire the property, you do the due diligence. And once you have a clean due diligence report that shows that there are no issues, no encumbrances, and you are sure, then you enter into the contractual negotiations with the seller or the developer in this case. Uh, once the T's and C's have been agreed between the parties, uh, just to quickly add, please let me just quickly stop at the uh, the due diligence phase. One other thing that I think I should also flag as part of due diligence is that um, I had mentioned that in addition to the legal title, you also need to ensure do some form of physical surveillance. To find to get factual information from people that are on ground. Um, one of the things that this will do for you is it will give you first-hand information as to what is happening in that environment. It can also reveal if there are any communal issues within the land in that environment. So your due diligence is not only legal, it's also factual, physical due diligence. Um, and when you do that, you will be able to get, you know, first-hand information as to what is happening within that environment. And possibly if there's been any litigation um, on that property, your physical inspection will, or physical inquiries rather, will show uh, or throw up any such issues. So I thought I should just mention that in there so that you also understand that diligence goes beyond legal to physical to throw up litigation or communal issues. Now, fast forward to post diligence. Once you have um, a contract in place with the seller or the developer, as the case may be, you agree terms of payment. It could be a bullet payment or instrumental payments, depending on what structure um, is being agreed for the transaction. And once your transaction is, um, you've uh, the relevant type transfer documents are signed by the relevant parties. You collate some other supporting documents that are required to file an application to register or to perfect your title. Uh, so a little crash law pro oh, program right. of title in, in Nigeria stamped. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I think oh, can you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. Um, I was saying what's perfection of title within the Nigerian context means it means that you need to obtain the consent of the governor the consent of the governor acts as the validation for that transaction so for example if i'm buying a property from dr reese um i need to obtain the consent of the governor it is the consent of the governor that 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 validates that transaction that validates the transfer of legal title without which the transaction is void so that is the first you pay stamp duty and and, and then you register the document. Now, once these three steps have been taken, you, the buyer, you now have what is called a perfected title to that property. So you then, the cycle then starts all over again. So if I want to purchase a property from Dr. Rees, I conducted, I conduct legal due diligence on his title documents because those title documents are registered. So if I complete my own perfection process and I register and I perfect my own um, um, title documents, it means that if I want to sell or if I want to lease, anybody can go and conduct due diligence on my own title document. So really that's what the process is, due diligence, negotiation and documentation, and then perfection. That's the summary of the entire process. I don't, um, did that answer your question? That's perfect, thank you very much. And it's uh, very good to see the process um, you know, in, in full detail. Uh, thanks everyone for the questions that are coming in. We appreciate it. And we'll go, uh, I, think, uh, I hope all the speakers will be okay with it. We'll go a few extra minutes to get all the questions in. We really appreciate everyone uh, staying with us and, and this feedback. So 
We have a quick question for Stella, then uh, quite a few come in uh, for, you, uh, for, for you, uh, Dr. B. So uh, Chemezis asks, uh, Stella, does my investment property need to be in London or can it be in other parts of the UK? We are, th thanks, Chemezi. So the primary um, consideration is London. We are, in a pos uh, we are currently looking at other locations outside of London. But as you would imagine, those also have to be commercially viable locations. Um, we are looking to in expand that to include um, commuter towns. I mean, I, for instance, I don't live in London. I live 20 minutes by train outside London. So commuter towns, places in Hertfordshire, and then Manchester, Birmingham, which are major commercial cities. And we are, we are happy to take a look at those even now on, on a case by case basis. So. London remains primary market, and then commu commuter towns. Not everyone who lives, who works in London, um, lives in London, but we manage to get in every day. So we're happy to look at those also. That's fantastic. Okay, great. So we'll share more details. As we said, a few people uh, have been asking for the brochures. So post uh, the event, we'll be sharing the brochures. We'll be sharing the video we played and all the contact details. So you can uh, go on tours. I'll just note that. Cessna hosts uh, with uh, First World Communities uh, bi-weekly virtual tours. So if you are in the UK or you're in Lagos and you're not available to get to uh, Abbey Joe um, on a certain day, we'll be sending notifications. You can always join us for a virtual tour, so just join on the phone. Um, so um, Dr. Reese, um, we've had a few questions come in that's asked, um, do you have, um, firstly, can you tell us about um, um, other estates beyond choice and what locations uh, uh, First World Communities is building? You mentioned the beginning, and I think people are just trying to uh, lock it all down. And they also ask that when you're buying, in your experience, what do you see is uh, the average yield or a yield to be expected, uh, you know, in properties? And you personally, what, what's something that you look at when you're looking at renters? Um, first of all, they, we have other estates. We not only do choice, so apart from choice, which is in Abidjo GRA, um, we also have the cooperative city, which is adjoining cooperative villas uh, near Badore, closer to the Lagos Business School than uh, Abidjo GRA. Uh, we also have a development coming up in Nike Phase 1, uh, which is predominantly uh, small apartments, studios, and one-bed apartments. Uh, we expect to be on site uh, by end of the year, and the completion time is 18 months from the time we start. So that is in the pipeline. And of course, we have developments in Mechama um, in Abuja, which is part of the inventory that we have available for sale right now. Um, in terms of yield, the brochure will say a bit more about it. But what I would like to say is that uh, real estate in the investment, especially in Nigeria, is not a short-term game. It's not about the rental yield only. It's more about the appreciation in value. Uh, because as you all are aware, uh, Nigeria, we struggle with inflation. So what has cost you 10 million naira to develop this year is probably going to cost you a lot more next year. So inflation is something you need to watch out for. And um, property is something that always ensures that your inve investment outstrips and outperforms inflation. Sometimes you might get what seems to be a good yield on paper in terms of interest rates. But if, for example, you are getting a yield of 7% and interest is running at 10%, you actually have a negative yield. But that is not the case with property. The minimum that property will do for you is at least to keep up with inflation plus whatever you earn on top of the rental yield. So I'll advise that you look at not just the rental yield, but also the appreciation in value. I think I, I hope I covered um, all of yeah, that. Yeah, that was a great answer. So, I, you know, I, I think yeah, it's good to look at both the ability to rent and the growth in the land value. And I think anyone can see that if you were to invest in Lecky phase one when it was still swampland, you know, your returns are, you know, tremendous, uh, you know, now. 
Um, and so really looking at that active development. Um, Stanley Dyke uh, asked, uh, thank you Stanley, um, about the going rate of landed properties in Abbey Joe. Maybe I'll just touch a note on that. So if we look at the Choice Oasis as, as an example, which is fully built, you're getting something with the infrastructure already there. You're looking at two bedrooms starting at approximately 15.1 uh, million Naira, uh, three bed uh, apartments at 18.6, um, three bed townhouses uh, at 22.8, and up to 30 approximately, uh, I think we said 31 approximately for the four bedroom duplex. Uh, land will be a bit uh, less, so as we can see, the prices uh, are a bit more affordable than say phase one, of course, and further down. And then, you know, really what we talked about at the beginning is really about looking at, um, you know, when you're buying that we want to look at, you know, it's important to look at properties that are adding more than just uh, the property. So looking at the lifestyle, looking at the community, because really, uh, you know, important to see properties that are going to be increasing in value over time and that there's a plan uh, by the developer to manage that. So that's a bit of an idea about uh, the pricing. And, and, and what you can look at. But as, uh, uh, as Dr. Reese says, a fast growing area. And you know, we look at the next few years of the refinery going that Abijo will really be a central, a central part of that. Um, so uh, um, another question is it's similar to the others, but I think it's good to note on, Opayemi asks, and thank you Opayemi, um, is that what about investment properties owned in Scotland? Uh, will that, is, is there a plan to look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nigerians who are living in Scotland as potential clients? Um, okay, I mean, thanks for the question. So remember I mentioned that there is a proposition that the bank is working on. Now, that proposition, which is obviously not yet available, is such that it doesn't actually limit um, to where you have the property. And it doesn't necessarily require that you do. So, so what that would mean is that regardless of whether you had investment property in England or in Scotland, you could potentially take um, that facility. Um, so that's something that we will update the market as soon as it becomes available. And since you're in Scotland, of course, you'll be able to, to take advantage of that also. Great, that's fantastic. And just wrapping up a few questions, we're gonna give us a few more minutes. If anyone has a final questions you could ask, um, Ad uh, Adamu, um, Dr. Reese really seems to very like your projects and asked that, do you have any plans in the future of Kaduna or Kano to come to the north? Um, well, those, nothing is impossible. If we see a demand there, we'll go there. Uh, personally, in the course of my career, I did developments in both locations. Uh, there's a post-service housing scheme that I developed in Kaduna and another one in, uh, I think, Kano as well. But right now, First World Communities, which is the company that I lead now, we haven't done any developments in those locations. Our focus has been on Lagos and Abuja at the moment. But who knows if we get an invitation to partner with the state government because of issues of access to land, we will, we will be happy to look at it. Thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. And um, Agundayo, there's a question in from no, uh, Nanso. Thank you, Nanso. Uh, is that can you explain excision? Is it you said it is a device to buy land which exhibits excision as title? Just maybe just the, the define excision for us. Okay. Um, so the way it works in Nigeria is that before now, um, land was land was held by the communities and families. And notwithstanding the fact that we now have strong uh, governmental structures in place, the government continues to recognize the rights of families and communities to lands that have been held, you know, um, from time immemorial. So the process of excision is that that um, is a process of the government's recognition of um, a family or a community to a particular parcel of land. And that process actually ends and culminates in the issuance of um, what is called a gazette, which is a government instrument, formally recognizing the family or the community's title to that land. So the accession is the process. The end of that process is the gazette. The question then arises, the evidence of the family's land, the formal recognition of the family's land title to the land is the gazette. If that gazette has not been issued and is something in process, the question then is, do you want to take the risk of 
buying that land. I am not saying <laughs> Dr. Reese is laughing at me. I am not. <laughs> I am not saying that the family or the community do not have rights over that land. But you know, my duty as your lawyer is to advise you and bring out the risks and for you to then make the commercial call. So the question then is, if someone tells you I own something and the evidence of my title will be issued to me sometime in the future, the question for you then is, are you willing to take that risk to buy from you now and secure the land now? And when you have your title, then I will begin to do my perfection. Because what happens then is if you do not have the government gazette, then you are unable to perfect. But if you flip it to the community side, the, the economics is this. Before the gazette is out, the land is quite affordable. Once they have a formal instrument recognizing their title to the land, the prices go up. So it's um, it's a chicken and egg situation. But as your lawyer, my duty is to let you know what the risks are. In the absence of the gazette, you ordinarily will not be able to perfect your title. So are you willing? And no one can guarantee when that gazette will be out. I'm sure Dr. Reese is here and can confirm that. No one can guarantee when the gazette will be issued. It's, it's not an issue of months. It could be years, one, two, three plus years. So do you want to buy land and have the factual possession without um, having the legal title to the land? So that's a commercial call. That's fantastic. Thanks, Ekendaya. So I think we have one more question and then we'll give it to, to final words. Um, if anyone has any final questions, let us know. There's a, a great comment uh, uh, and question from Adenike. Uh, thank you, Adenike. Uh, Adenike says, Dr. Reese, so good to see you again. You have always been involved in affordable housing regulatory interventions from state and federal government levels. Can you advise on what is going on now and how Nigerians at home are able to afford your properties? Maybe it would be worth me touching on the, the, the payment plan, but thank you, Adenike. Well, thank you very much, Adenike, for that question. I think um, a lot is going on. The federal government uh, has plans uh, to stimulate the sector. Uh, there is talk of delivering 300,000 homes through the office of the vice president as a special initiative, working with the Family Homes Fund. Um, but that is government. I've taken a step back. It's been a while since I had any uh, direct work with uh, government, uh, just to allow me focus on first world communities. I currently, what we do at our own end in first world communities is to uh, help our off takers by providing uh, innovative schemes, housing finance schemes that exist in other environments, which if you are based in the UK, you may be familiar with, for example, shared equity. So we have a partnership with the Lagos state government that allows us to do shared equity. And what do I mean by that? Is an arrangement where the equity in the property, even if you take a mortgage on it, is jointly shared by the homeowner and the state government, and in some cases, the developer as well. So Lagos state government, for instance, will defer uh, collecting the value of land on the property, and the developer could also defer some of its profits. And then all you just deal with is what is left. Sometimes that can be as high as up to 30%. So instead of looking for a mortgage to fund 100% of the value of the property, you're only looking for 70%, which kind of makes it more affordable. So that's shared equity. We also have a scheme uh, that we have, which is a um, lease to own, which allows you to make lease payments and then gives you a window of about five years within which to buy the property. So you make a small deposit with a commitment to buy within five years. So the five years gap uh, gives you time to increase your income and access a mortgage of some sort whilst you continue to live in the property. So these two schemes have come to, uh, in addition to what is already available in the market, which is typically a straightforward repayment mortgage. We don't have interest only uh, mortgages yet in Nigeria, which is a challenge because uh, the most popular uh, type of mortgage in the UK, for example, 
uh, for residential is not repayment mortgages. It is mostly interest-only mortgages that allows you to pay only the interest. And then later on, you probably uh, pay an insurance premium that allows you to take some uh, substantial amount of money that helps you to pay at the end of the new period. So we have introduced two new innovative schools. That's uh, what we have done uh, in our case. I hope that uh, helps a bit at any case. Thank you. Am I the only one that cannot hear oh. Daniel? No, uh, not. I think he's back now. Okay, sorry about that. So we have okay. one final quick question, and then we're going to give last words to everyone. Um, but uh, Echo Dyer Stanley asks is, is the government approved excision the same as a gazette? So, the gazette is the completion of the process. So, um, I'm, I'm looking for the for, for the for the simplest example here. The excision process is the recognition process. Once that process is completed and it has been approved, then that approval has to be published in a government instrument, and that is known as the gazette. That is the one. That's the evidence of your title. So it is possible for you to have an approval of an excision that has not been published in the gazette for the purpose of um, um, verifying title that extension should be published in the Gazette. So that Gazette then serves as the evidence of your title. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, okay, well, I think you know, we're already 15 minutes over, um, so th I appreciate the, the speakers so much uh, for sticking with us and uh, for these excellent answers. And thank you so much, uh, all of you who are attending for your questions. So we'd like to end it with, I was going to end it on a positive note and maybe you know, we could go around and just say, you know, what is something that makes you optimistic about the Nigerian housing market? You know, there's a lot of negativity going on. What are you optimistic about and what, what makes you excited when you think about the housing market? Um, Stella, do you want to start or shy? Yeah, I'm ha happy to start. Um, when I think about Nigeria, I think of uh, a country which has a growing population I think of a, a country where you have aspiring youth who have very high standards and continuously growing. So the fact that that's a growing market, it just pro provides a great opportunity for the investor. Um, so I think it's, it's a win in all cases. And then, of course, we also have the responsibility to contribute, even though we may be outside of our country, to contribute towards bridging that gap of the housing deficit um, in Nigeria. And those would be my final words. And I just would like to mention that property, whether it's for investment purposes or residential, is the single largest purchase any pod, anybody would make. And so it is important that you go through any property purchase fully aware. And what this platform provides is an opportunity to work with trusted partners and to ensure that the largest investment you're making is an investment that you will remain happy about um, having invested in, in a growing economy. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, who would like to go next? I'll yield the floor to Akunaya. Akunaya, go on. I know the. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I think the traction in the housing market in Nigeria is um, is quite um, encouraging, and you can now see that. Um, we are achieving what the development, developed countries have actually achieved, which is the various outskirts cities are now being opened up. And so people no longer, is, the concentration at the city center has now been dissipated. Everyone is going out of the city to come, walk in the city and then go back out. Um, as just to piggyback off what uh, Mrs. Um, Stella said, um, in, in, in getting your own uh, um, piece of the cake, piece of the land cake, if you choose to call it, um, at the end of the at the end of the day you want to have peace of mind you want to have an investment that is secure you want to have an investment that um is uh that can also generate wealth and one way to do that a fundamental part of that is to make sure that you get your partners and your advisors that will help you uh, um achieve what it is that you want to achieve if one is sick you go to the doctor if you're doing an investment go to your investment advisors if you're doing a real estate deal go to your developers and in all of this you still need to consult your lawyer. So I think make sure that you get 
trusted advisors to guide you through the process. It may That may have some financial implication in terms of slight markup, but it's nothing compared to the peace of mind that you get at the end of the day. Certainly. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for staying with us on this uh, platform and for to Daniel for putting it together. Um, but what makes me optimistic about the market, one is that um, right now it's the best time to invest because prices are very low. And um, it's inevitable. They can only go so low because prices are low supply is diminishing mm -hmm. so it's inevitable that somewhere in the near future give it three to four years there will be significant supply shortage and when that happens what do you think is going to happen to prices they are going to hit the roof we have seen it before is a cyclical maybe we have not seen them go so low because of covid and everything else that's going on uh the even the foreign exchange issue the devaluation when prices really pick up in Nigeria, they don't do incrementals like, you know, something went up 3%. Things go up in Nigeria like, you know, it's doubled. That's the kind of thing that we know here. So uh, if I were in a position to invest and I have the resources to do it, this is the best time to do it, whether as a place to live or for investment purposes. This is the opportunity to pick up the best deals that are available. Because when prices start to uh, turn around, they might be just out of reach. Thank you very much. I'll leave it there. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And I guess on my note, what I think, you know, I, I've lived in Nigeria now for, for two years and um, in, in West Africa for the last four. And what really excites me, I think, you know, as of lately and kind of uh, echoing on what's been said is, you know, really this holistic uh, style of development, whereas, you know, Dr. Reed said that from the beginning, not thinking about individual housing, but thinking about communities, thinking about shared wealth and growth. You know, some of the risks from the government can be mitigated by building the roads and the estate so people can have that experience. And as Ekman Dio had to move out of the city center, somewhere that's quiet, pristine, and have, you know, everything there in one place. So um, I think I couldn't agree more. It's a great time to, to, to invest if, if you're able to. And just to you know, keep a track of what's going on in the market and how the dynamics are changing. So uh, I thank everyone so much for coming. Um, again, as many people have asked, we'll be sending a follow-up email with the recording, with the video that was showed, um, with the brochures about the, the details. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, Cecil Global is a UK-based company. We focus on verified properties and trust in the property transaction process. We have an office in, uh, in the UK, in London, and in Lagos. Uh, if anyone would like to meet. And so we thank our distinguished panel so much for joining for this great conversation. And thank you all for sticking with us now almost an hour and a half, uh, a fantastic event. And uh, we'll be hosting uh, a virtual tour uh, in just two, uh, two weeks uh, uh, at Choice uh, Oasis. So if anyone wants to join, you'll be getting the link so you can see it if you're not in the country uh, virtually as well. So uh, thanks, everyone, um, and have a fantastic evening and, and a great weekend. Thank you, Daniel. Thank, thank you. you thank you, everyone. Thanks all thank for you. attending.